Hello, good day. So, I am going to be reviewing a TV series. And the TV series I'm going to review is The Lair. Now, first of all, this is not a TV series that's for uh, everyone. It's a t uh, three season series that is uh, heavily catering to the gay community. And it is by what order? Company. It's the same company that made um, Dante's Call. I think it says somewhere here who made it. It's from here. Uh, and they basically bases themselves on making, uh, making uh, movies for the gay and lesbian community. So yeah, what is this series? It is basically a horror, romance, erotic series about a small island town where there is this gay sex bar called the Lair. And of course, it is run by vampires. And it is about uh, a newspaper journalist called Tom, who basically starts investigating the Lair and gets dragged into it. Dark yeah, skimming world. And yeah, it has three uh, seasons. Season one which has uh, which has <coughs> six uh, episodes. Uh, season two which has nine I think. And season three which have thirty. And the episodes are, I think they're about 25 minutes long. So, yeah, <coughs> for reviewing the plot, it's a very basic vampire type story. It's basically about uh, uh, Tom Atherton, some, uh, and he's a newspaper journalist, and um, one day he gets a call from a mysterious uh, informant who tells him that he has information about the Bayside murders and he tells him to investigate the lair and gives him a strange amulet. Uh, back home his very very jealous boyfriend finds the amulet and goes ballistic thinking that Tom is unfaithful and so he goes to the lair to investigate and of course he gets attacked by vampires and that starts the whole thing. Now, after a while, the leader of the vampires, Damien, he um, falls in love with Tom. And you have a lot of side plots and side quests and so on. So, yeah. Now, I think there's good and bad things about the plot. First of all, I was interested in it. It kept my attention enough that I looked forward to the next episode. Uh, it's not like it is a huge masterpiece. But it, I was interested in to see uh, what would happen next. And, yeah, one thing I do not like about the plot is that there is a lot of plot lines that go absolutely nowhere. In season two, there's this subplot about a mad botanist who gets his hand on this cursed plant that moves around and eventually starts killing people. And of course, he then falls in love with, in love with his uh, research assistant. But it goes nowhere. It's just it puts the takes the plant into the forest. It's, it's a lot of build up. They use a lot of time for this, and it sort of just fizzles out into absolutely nothing. Nothing happens. He puts the plant out in the forest. He gets attacked by a werewolf. And okay, no, nothing more with that plant. And it's the same with that werewolf. He shows up in season 2. And it gets built up a relationship with him and the sheriff. And nothing comes of it. I mean, the werewolf loses control, he attacks a few people, and he runs off. And nobody hears from him again, and there's a lot of these things. And it's also with Tom's boyfriend. He, I mean, the whole of the first season is about Tom not wanting to give up on his boyfriend wants to know what's happened. That's what drives him into more and more danger. In season 2 the boyfriend has become a vampire and eventually Damien kills him and uh, while Tom watches and he's just uh, okay. 
so yeah, that, that's a bit. But the main plotline isn't bad. Now, obviously they had intended more seasons, because season 3 ends in a bit of a cliffhanger, so let me just warn you right now about that. Season 3, while there is an ending, it's a very, very bad ending, basically the bad guys win. And it ends on a cliffhanger, and it doesn't have a proper ending. Obviously they decided to have another season, but it, they never got it really good. Perhaps there's a chance they could at some point in the future, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Usually when uh, niche series like this get cancelled, it gets cancelled for good. Now, about the gay sex. There's a lot of sex in the series. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like I usually say when I describe it, it is one sex scene short of a porn with plot. So basically, you if you have a problem with seeing men having sex, this is the series for you. And to be honest, the sex isn't that exciting. It's like, you see, basically you see the dangly part now and then, but not a lot. Usually you see a lot of butts. There are a lot of very well-toned male butts in this series. I mean, there are more. This is a vampire series, but you see a lot more firm male butts than you see vampires. And you do see a lot of vampires. So, since I am a lover of both firm male butts and vampires, it's a good series for me. Anyway, you will see a lot of sex. And usually it's, you see men rubbing one another and you see a lot of somebody kneeling by someone and the head going up and down in their crotch. But you don't, it's not a porn so you don't see sexual organs in action. And I don't think the sex is that that it uh, detracts from the story too much, though it do use a lot of time. And But it's not that exciting either, because basically I'm of that opinion that either it should be a straight up porn and you watch something for the porn, or you or it should be basically story and then the sex shouldn't be that prevalent, but I also realized that not being a gay man, the sex scenes in this series when I'm not the intended audience, so I'm not going to complain too much about them. They're there, it's, the series is what it is, erotica is a big part of it. So yeah, now for the acting. <laughs> oh, uh, well. Some of the characters acted extremely badly. I mean, the, the actors look like porn actors, and they act like porn actors. It's like some, hi, I'm here to fix the washing machine. It's that level for some of them, while others are passable. For example, um, I have a list there of some of the actors. Um, Peter Stickles, who plays uh, Damien Cordonet, does a decent job. Uh, David uh, uh, Moretti, who plays Tom Edderton, does a decent job. And Dylan Vox, who plays Colin, the vampire bad guy, does a uh, decent job. And the same does... Uh, oh, let me scroll down here... Um, what is his... Then again, Brian Nolan, who plays Frankie, does a decent job. The rest, not so much. Worst, I would probably say, is... Um, is it that plays the sheriff? Uh, uh, Colton Ford, that plays Sheriff Trout. He is just there to be the butch, basically, and he plays just that. And uh, Beverly Lynn, who plays Laura Rivers. That, that, that's a poor actress right there. I would be surprised if she isn't. I'm not saying that she is, but yeah, the way she acts. I have seen better acting in school plays for seven-year-olds. But, yeah. The other actors... Basically, the story works. They act well enough to have the story work. But, yeah. Now, one thing I do not like in the series. And, like I said, I like that it's a series that focuses on uh, on gay relationships. Because there are too few 
<coughs> TV series and other kinds of entertainment that caters to the gay and lesbian community. I am bisexual myself and I like to see that. I have one thing I do not like. Everyone on this island seems to be a gay man. I mean, there are, I think, through the entire series, I counted five women. Five women on the entire island. You have Laura, who is uh, Tom's friend. And, uh, yeah, she's one of those who loves loose ends that just, uh, you know, she dies. But, yeah, well, it's not that big of a spoiler either, because it isn't treated that anything in the series. It just fizzles away. And, yeah, uh, we have her, we have a female waitress, we have a female judge, and the judge and the waitress is just, you see, they are just there, like, for two minutes on screen, tops. And eventually you get a female vampire who, uh, she has a sort of a role, and that female vampire has another, another woman, and that I think is the all. Everybody else, everybody else on the island is ma male and gay, and then sort of my suspense of disbelief was off because really, really, <laughs> and also I think it's a bit sad because it's sort of. It sort of segments the population. I much more like stories where you have gay or lesbian relationships that's in a normal setting, and I'm not meaning normal as they can't be a supernatural setting, because I really like a supernatural setting. But basically in a setting where there are straight people, where there are... Basically that it's not like you can't have... Uh, you can't have... Um, uh, a gay relationship unless it's situated on an island of the gay vampire witches. That sort of thing bothers me a bit because I feel that we are, we are in 2013 now, I think this was produced in 2011 or something like that, it should be possible to have a, a story that caters to the gay community that is placed in an environment where there also are straight people. So yeah. Other than that, like I said, the series has its ups and its downs. The ups is that the story itself is quite good. The characters are interesting. Take Damien, for example. He is uh, very much a typical vampire. He also have a bit of a Dorian Gray vibe going on because it's a painting. That, and if that painting gets destroyed, he dies and so on and so forth. The story is interesting. It's not hugely, massively impressive, but it's interesting. So that's good. The characters are relatively well developed. On the negative side, the acting is very variable. There are some storylines that just go nowhere, and the ending is a bit weak because obviously there was meant to be another season. So, do I recommend this series? Well, I recommend it for basically two reasons. I do recommend it because I think it's important to support this kind of material. So if you at all think that you might enjoy it, then I think it's a good idea to support it because basically um, uh, publishers like here are very niche and um, basically the gay and lesbian community needs more TV series, movies, and so on, directed for that, and it also helps to normalize that kind of relationships. I recommend it if you like vampire stories, because it's a very classical, simple, okay vampire story. It's a TV series, it isn't too long, it doesn't take a lot of time to see it, it's quite cheap to buy. However, I, this isn't for everyone, like I said, there is a lot of sets. This definitely is not for the too young, and you have to be able to stand some bad acting, because there is a lot of bad acting. If you can stand that, I think you might enjoy this series. I did, um, so yeah, I would give this perhaps a 
6 out of 10. It's by no means perfect, it has some glaring flaws, but all in all, it's pretty good. As for extras on the on the DVDs, and there are some good extras. I don't remember all of them here. One of them has a backlot, a photo gallery, and an actor commentary. Um, uh, but that's basically what it is. It has some makings of some description of the setting and so on. I should also mention that this is set in the same setting as Dante's Co. So if you want all of uh, Dante's Co, you also want this one as it is in the same setting. So, yeah, it's a quite okay series. Not a masterwork, but quite okay. It gets my thumb buff, buff, buff. Uh, approval if you can stand all the sex scenes. So yeah, that's my review of the lair. Have a great day and blessed be.